Okay, so you want to start investing. You've saved up a little bit of money, but you don't know what to do. When you talk to your parents, they suggest stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, the basics, the safe ones. When you talk to your friends, they say you'd be stupid not to invest in real estate and crypto. And those financial gurus you follow on TikTok, they only talk about Forex trading and day trading. So you have all of these options presented to you, but you're scared to make a choice because should you mess up, you could potentially lose all of this money you've worked hard to earn. So sit down and relax, and let's teach you what you need to know about basic investing. Let's go. The goal of investing is quite simple, to have your money earn more money in some fashion. So if you invest $1,000 in X, let's say in a year's time it's worth 1050 or 1065 or even more. When you leave money lying around the house, let's say in your sock drawer or in a basic savings account, you're doing yourself a disservice because of something called inflation. Inflation can be caused by all sorts of factors, but the end result is that your money does not go as far as it once did. So that thousand dollars that you chose not to invest a year ago, which could have bought you, let's say, I don't know, 50 books. Now prices have risen so much, your purchasing power has decreased, meaning you can now only buy 40 books. Now for your sake, we're going to be limiting ourselves in the investments that we'll be talking about. If you're watching this video, chances are you're a beginner, so you really shouldn't be investing in watches, crypto, and real estate. If you know those niches, then by all means, go for it. But we're gonna be talking about the more safer and reliable options. First off is the most well-known option, which is stocks. You purchase a stock in a publicly traded company, now making you the proud owner of a percentage of that company. You won't really have a say in how that company runs itself, unless you own at least 50% of all outstanding shares plus one. Now, regardless of the stock, there are two ways to make money. The first way is let's say you hold onto the stock for a long period of time, and should it increase in value, you sell it for a profit. The other way is through dividends. So you still want your stock to increase in value, but now you get the added benefit of some of the profits. So whatever amount of money that the company distributes toward the shareholders, you'll get a cut of it. However, not all companies do dividends, so keep that in mind. So how do you invest in these stocks? Well, one option is investing in individual stocks. Now, I strongly do not recommend this option because we, the average investor, know so little about these companies that it can be a really big gamble. There are individuals who do stock trading for a living, who have the education, the connections, and the fancy software, and they still get it wrong. The stock market is very unpredictable, so if this is your future you're talking about, you should consider a safer option, which is index funds. Index funds are far more safer because you invest in a group of companies. A prime example is the S&P 500. So your fund could represent dozens, if not hundreds of companies. So if a few are not doing well, you don't take as much of a hit to your portfolio because the other companies that are doing well will compensate for the losses. Also, index funds are easy to invest in, have consistent performance, and are transparent. If you don't believe me, then you should listen to the words of the Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett, one of the richest men in the world who actually started investing when he was 11 years old. He said in 2017, consistently buy an S&P 500 low cost index fund. Keep buying it through thick and thin and especially through thin. To further drive this point home, take a look at this chart which tracked $10,000 in the S&P 500 from February 1992 to February 2024. During this 32 year period, the index had a compound annual growth rate of 10.32%, causing that $10,000 to grow to an astonishing $220,000 plus dollars. Another option to consider is bonds. So this is how governments and organizations raise money by borrowing money from investors. Unlike with stocks, you have no ownership. Think of it like a loan where you'll be paid back the face value of your money eventually an agreed upon date but also receive interest payments occasionally, most likely twice a year. There are many kinds of bonds, but the ones that I wanna talk about are government and corporate bonds. Now, government bonds, also known as treasury bonds, are considered a very safe investment, especially from countries like the United States. They provide a steady income, are highly liquid, meaning easily bought and sold on a secondary market, and are usually in terms of 20 or 30 years. The downside is that they offer lower returns when compared to riskier options like corporate bonds or stocks. Also, interest rates and inflation can affect the value of the bonds. Corporate bonds typically have a higher return but can be very risky. There is always the chance that the issuing company defaults on their debt obligations, 
Interest rates also affect corporate bonds, and depending on the credit rating of the corporation, the bonds may have lower liquidity. Overall, government bonds are the safer bet because the U.S. government guarantees them. High yield savings accounts, while technically not an investment, is a nice entry level way to earn some interest on your money. Just look online to see what banks offer the best interest rates and then put your money into one of their savings accounts. This is not the most lucrative option, but it's a very safe option. Most accounts are government insured up to $250,000. So even if the bank fails, your money is safe. Another option is CDs, which are very similar to high yield savings account, where you put your money into a bank or a credit union savings account and you earn interest. So the big difference is that with CDs, you have to reach a set minimum value and also you have to do a set minimum time length. So for example, you have to put your $500 into this CD account for 10 months. You can't touch it for 10 months, but because you can't touch it for 10 months, they give you a really good interest rate. And then after that 10 months is up, you can have access to your money. You can either put it back into it with your interest and continue to grow your money, or now that you have your money, you can spend it on something else. And the great thing about these accounts is that they're also insured by the government up to $250,000. So again, if the bank fails, your money is safe. Now I'm sure some of you still have some questions. So I found the most requested ones online and provided the correlating answers. How much money do I need to start? Now this is a tricky question because there are some cases where you can start with as little as a dollar, but also depending on your platform and the specific thing you're investing in, they might have minimums required for the investing. But the bigger question you should be asking yourself, am, am I prepared to invest? So is your budget in check? Is your savings correct? Do you have an emergency fund? If you can't answer these questions, then you really shouldn't be saving yet because you're not ready. Because should an emergency happen, you can't touch the money you're investing or you'll have a penalty involved. So it's really not worth investing until every other aspect of your life is prepared. Trust me, you can invest at any point in your life. It will be there forever. Make sure everything else is set and then invest. I also attached an article in the description down below that goes into further detail about investing with certain levels of money. The next question is, when should I start investing? Now, the short answer is as soon as possible, but the long answer is when you can afford it. So the longer you invest, the more money you should make due to something called compound interest, which I'll be talking about next week. The big thing you need to focus on is, can I afford to invest? Because remember, the money that you invest, you won't be able to touch for years or even decades. So if you can deal with your expenses just fine without touching this money, then you're good. The last question is what should I invest in? Now this is completely dependent on you, your risk tolerance and your goals. When we're young, we can take more risks because should it fail, we have more time to bounce back. When we're older, the complete opposite is true because we have limited money and time. Most people do a nice combo of the both where they have some safe investments where they know they have a guaranteed return and also they do some more riskier investments so there's high risk and high reward today's video should have given you a basic understanding of investing and also some basic ways to invest i plan to do a part two to this video sometime in the future so if there's any specific investing methods you want me to talk about put them in the comments down below and until then i'm evan and thanks for watching if you like what you just saw then click on the video here also if you haven't like subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos